got my master's degree in public health, we did an antibiotic study in Yale and Haven Hospital. And there were a team of us, and we were excited once again to go and do our research. We had to take a class before we could go into the hospital and learn how to read the charts. An entire semester class, just so we could understand the coded language. And then when we look at the information that is being provided to people when they come in for care, they don't understand. And then we have the digital divide. We assume that everybody has a computer. Yes, indeed. People don't have computers. Say it. So how are we going to, when I say Google it, all of you are, oh, I'm going to Google that. <laughs> there are people that Can't. are not Googling anything because they don't know how to, don't have access to the technology to do so, and et cetera. So we need to address health literacy, which is a critical issue and a basic solution. So unequal educational attainment. Watch how all of this ties up together. Watch and look. Education and health. They go hand in hand. So, so unequal educational attainment and lower social economic status, which is the plight of many emerging majority populations. And they use a new word, emerging majority, a new term. Ooh, I like it. I don't <laughs> use the term minority. Not for my writing. I have contributing authors in my book, but I wipe that term out mm. of my lexicon because in Baton Rouge, I understand, that's no longer applicable. All right. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. So why are we using the term minority to minimize people of color in the United States? Because already in many locations, and very, very soon, it's coming. Mm. Majority will look different. Come on. Come on. Is that right? So we are emerging majorities. And we need to get ready for that. Because emerging majorities are overly represented, certain groups, within the context of lower socioeconomic status. Because this is about money. And it just so happens that people who are of color are highly represented in lower socioeconomic status groups. And why is that? I'm not going to do the history. We all know. We all know the deal. We don't have to pretend. So knowing all of that, we have to deal with the terms that we're using. We have to deal with health literacy and the definition, the ability to obtain processes, information, and services needed to make appropriate health decisions. How are you going to make a good health decision when you don't even understand what people are talking about? Mm -hmm. You can't make a health decision like that. You might not even understand the language spoken, which is about cultural competency. Because we talk about the melting pot, and we have people here from all over the world, and et cetera, then we have to be willing, since our country does not technically have a national language, Say that. Okay. Mm. we have to be willing to speak to people in their yeah. language. One way sure, either and jump. I speak Mandarin, I speak Spanish, and I travel this globe. And why do I do that? Because I cannot understand culture and do the work that I do and come here and stand before you if I don't know what I am talking about because I've never seen it with my own eyes. We have so many people. Last night, I had dinner with Dr. Daniel, and our waiter was from India. And he came over to wait on us, and I was so glad. So when I, I asked him, I said, do you mind if I ask, are you from India? And he said, yes. How do you know? I said, because I've been to your country. Mm. And then I started to talk to him about dishes that they eat in India. Mm -hmm. And how the samosa that we enjoy so much in India is nothing but a little snack. And we have it at the top of the list <laughs> in our Indian menu restaurant. So I said, you know, it's such a pleasure. To, so he was just delighted. Mm -hmm. She sees me. I know yes. what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on her, but she sees me. Do we see the people that we are caring for? Come on. 
Do we understand them? Do we value them? Mm -hmm. Not tolerate. Don't you dare tolerate me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be tolerated by you. I don't want to be tolerated by anyone. Because I'm you. I'm equal to you. All right. Not to be tolerated. Don't have a tolerance program in your organization in regard to me. I'm equal to you. Value me. Respect me. Understand me. Appreciate me. And then you will care for me. Hmm. Under any other circumstances, you will feed me garbage food. You won't really care for me. You will cut money that's needed to take care of me. Because why? You don't value me as a being in this world, in this society. That's what we really need to talk about. So, let's talk about that. A UC Davis study conducted by Paul Lake resulted in the findings that the correlation between obesity and lower level wages is strong. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to pay for more studies for you to tell me that garbage in is going to lead to problems? Yes. I don't need more studies. Fix it. Mm, come on. Furthermore, public health scientists have identified several potential reasons why lower wages could support the tendency for obesity. Poor people tend to live in less safe neighborhoods with reduced access to parks and other low-cost means of activity. Healthy, lower-cost foods also tend to be more expensive and less available in poorer communities. Again, I say, really? <laughs> Do I need you all to keep telling me this? People are living this. They know. We don't need the continued studies and research to tell us about what people are living. Fix it mm. is what we want. How long are we going to sit and congregate and talk about what we already know? and read papers about these things and talk amongst ourselves in our highbrow circles <laughs> about the suffering that people are experiencing. People are marginalized. What does that mean? We look in this room and everyone is sitting together at the center. Now we could have someone, some people there's no chairs and they would have to stand up on the side. Or maybe sometimes we have people watching things from another room because there's not enough space in yeah. the inner room. That's marginalization. Why are we marginalizing people? Why are we doing that? How do they feel? You feel it even on the airplane. Mm -hmm. You see people, I heard the flight attendant say on the flight, if you are sitting in the coat section, <laughs> Please do not use the bathroom that's located in the area where people have what kind of seats? First class. First class. <laughs> use the bathroom in the back, she said. I said, this is just a marginalization situation. <laughs> you know, they are really pointing out, you paid less money, you have less money, or you didn't have enough miles. So you're in the back, and we put your bathroom in the back, and don't you come up here. <laughs> because if you come up here, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> this is our lives. We're laughing. But it is true. But this is the truth. Yes, it is. How does that feel? That doesn't feel good at all. But that's what we are doing in our society. We're marginalizing human beings. That's what we're doing. So let's talk about lack of humanity. What kind of society do we live in that doesn't ensure that everyone has access to quality food? We all know that we are what we eat. We've all known that forever. How can we expect people to be healthy when they don't have optimal health literacy? That's a priority. That should be at the front of every set of slides that talks about health. Not having such is an affront to the very people who built this country. Yes, I'm saying it. Google it. 
<laughs> okay? Who are now largely poor in America. Namely, black people. And yes, I'm saying the race. People don't want us to do that, but I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about these food deserts a little bit more. Where do we find in them? And you know, small community grocery stores, they're convenient. They call them convenience stores, right? <laughs> but limited inventory. Prices are higher than supermarkets, limits access to healthy food choices, and then we have the fast food restaurants. They offer cheap, easily accessible food. Listen to this terminology. Individuals with limited income flock to them to feed themselves and their families. Nutritional value, value is questionable at best and problematic at worst. Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol and cigarettes, easily accessible in low-income communities, yes, it provides opportunities for people to turn to alcohol and cigarettes as a coping mechanism. We need to cope. It's available. It's right there. Available in excess in low-income communities. Why do we allow this? Why is that happening? Who's making that money? And what is their consciousness that they say, let's put the food that's not good, and alcohol, and cigarettes, and all of that where these people are poor, and let's make money off of them. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to need our health care. <laughs> so let's do it like that. Is someone so sinister that they are doing this? Yes. Because that's the way it looks. If you look at it, it appears that something very sinister is going on. We have to understand that we can solve